ETH Lizards, better known now as Lizards Labs, just had an AMA in their Discord. And I made a tweet about this earlier, but I couldn't be more bullish than I am right now. The AMA lasted almost an hour and a half and I took notes. I'm gonna try to sum it up for you, hopefully in less than seven or eight minutes, but we'll see. So let's get right into it. So we started talking about LizCoin. It's their next core objective. They're targeting July for the TGE. The one sticking point they're having right now is getting onto a centralized exchange. Annie, the CEO says that's a non-negotiable and launching the token without being on a centralized exchange could be a disaster. So they need to get that done. He also said that they're looking just to launch on one exchange because it's costly and after a successful launch is easier to get onto other exchanges. He made a note that there was 4 million raised during the seed round led by the community. The community themselves allocated 2.6 million towards that. Another note that happened later was the mention of RevDis for LizCoin and how that RevDis is going to come from revenue from gaming related products. The next they talked about LIP21 which has to deal with the token supply. They talked about unit bias. The options for this LIP is to either keep the same amount of coins, have a 10x on the coins, or have a 100x on the coins. This doesn't affect investors value. So if you were going to get, you know, X amount in an airdrop, or you picked up some of the list coin in a seed round, if it goes 10x, then everything goes 10x. So you don't have to worry about that. Next up was LIP 22, which had to deal with the tokenomics. They're planning to do an airdrop to people outside of this community, but they say that they're going to do it very strategically and make sure that coins are getting into the hands of the right people. They've onboarded a handful of KOLs, key opinion leaders, if you haven't heard of that term before and make sure they invested a good amount so that they're there for the long term and that the vesting time is over a longer period of time. Now, originally by having a ETH Lizard staked, you would get a bonus multiplier on staking your Liz coin. They're now removing that and replacing it with more airdrops for the ETH Lizards. So what it looks like they're doing is they're going from originally two airdrops to three airdrops with more Liz coin in those airdrops. The first one remains unchanged. Everybody holding ETH Lizard will get it. The second and third airdrops drops, you will need to have your ETH Lizard staked to be eligible for that. And they're hoping to get both of these LIPs up for a vote within the next week. Next up, we have some developer updates. They talked about Battle and Beyond. It's ready for the next wave. There's going to be wagering in ETH. There's also going to be paying for pink slips or paying for the disc content. So if you lose your match, you lose all of the contents within the discs you opened as well. They're going to have a chat mode with Liz emojis included and spectators are going to be able to participate in that. They're continuing to work on IMX passport support, work on the staking dash, board. Um, it was mentioned that I believe I got this right. 70% of the staking rewards are going to be in the Liz coin and 30% are going to be in loot boxes. And there'll be different things included in those loot boxes. They mentioned that Liz coin could be included um, as well as maybe some other things, maybe elemental lizards, who knows. Next up, they have an official announcement for their next project and it's called Lizard League. And it's a metagame product that's going to revolve around esports and wagering in, in the web three space. And they made it scalable. And it's going to be one of the core utilities of an elemental lizard. It's going to be AI based and again scalable so that they can onboard new web three games very easily. Next up they talk quick about the lizard launch pad and they're going to have an LIP coming soon for that as well. This is going to be something similar to based VC where they're going to be bringing in deals for the lizard community. The first deal is already complete even though they don't really even have a dashboard built up yet but they're planning to do more and Annie also mentioned that there's other projects that are doing this where that's all they're doing so they need to take more of the income for the project but because there's so much going on at Lizard Labs, they can make sure that more of the benefits of those deals are going to the community members. There's also mentioned that the portfolio subdial elections are coming up soon. This next epoch is going to move from six months to seven months because they want it to end after the new year. They don't want it to end at the end of December. And he also mentioned that this is going to be a very important one because during this epoch, there's going to be some coins that have been vested and it's going to be the council's decision to liquidate some of those when the time is right. And last but not least, they went through a list of new team members and core contributors. They probably went through about seven or eight of them, which was kind of shocking to me. They're really building up this team. But the one that really stood out to me, and I think it's going to stand out to you if you're an Alluvium person. So Nick, who just recently left Alluvium for some health and personal issues, it looks like he's taking on a new role at ETH Lizards. You know, I'm really excited to have him there. Nick was one of my favorite people on the Alluvium team, and I'm glad he's staying kind of like involved in everything because we know how closely ETH Lizards and Alluvium are. But there's your quick recap of the AMA that happened on May 20th, 2024. Things are looking bullish to me. I can't wait to see how the end of 2024 goes and into 2025. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe if you're not, comment down below. And I'll catch you next time.